Welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Jamila Corbett. I'm a brand strategist, community builder, and the founder of the global community. I am a brand where we help you build a purposeful and profitable brain through learning and collaboration. I am here today with Corey Schneider, the founder of New York Adventure Club, to talk about the growth and success of his community. Thank you so much for joining us, Corey. Thank you, Jamila. So tell us a little bit about the New York Adventure Club for all of the people that don't know. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, I joke when I moved uh, to New York five years ago, I fell in the Manhattan bubble. Uh, it's an overwhelming city. It's difficult to meet people. So I stayed in my comfort zone, uh, went to the same restaurants, uh, hung out with the same friends, went to work, came home, just one minute monotonous cycle. Uh, then a year later, I had a slight early life crisis, which I think we, we all do. Uh, and I realized first, I'm just a really boring person. I don't do anything in my spare time. And two, supposedly, it's the greatest city in the world, but I didn't know anything about it. So I made a self-pack that every weekend I go out, do something, go somewhere, really explore the city and, and, and try to understand the, uh, the different communities, and especially with New York. Every street is a different community. And uh, for two years, just, you know, dragged friends on my own to, to come on along. I usually had to uh, bribe them with uh, free drinks or food because, you know, when you tell your friends you're going to Flushing Queens at 10 a.m. on Saturday, you get some strange looks. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I created a Facebook group to make it easier to communicate with them. Uh, and then it, all it was was a newsletter. Um, there, there were no, we, I was not doing any events, just a newsletter showcasing interesting experiences around the city because I figured if I did a little work to put, the, uh, you know, put a list together of all these interesting locations that they would come out. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. They, it was the same 20 friends that didn't want to come to Flushing with me. Uh, but a couple months later, I decided, okay, one last shot. I'm going to uh, book a tour once a week at an interesting location. Uh, but I'll do all the work. I'll buy the private tickets. I'll set the dates and the times. All they have to do is show up and pay me cash. I couldn't, it couldn't get easier than that. Um, at the same time, I was writing uh, for a, a blog in the city and decided to write an article about the history of the place we were going to visit. And at the end, I said, join New York Adventure Club. It linked to the Facebook group. I figured maybe two or three people uh, would join, um, but a hundred people joined. Wow! Uh, and I was at my, you know, I was at my at my my full time job, uh, and I just remember the the second where everyone started flooding in, asking for a ticket. And the, but you know, I wasn't selling tickets; it was a Facebook group. My friends were just going to pay me cash, um, and you know, they they couldn't believe they hadn't heard of New York Adventure Club before. And, you know, I didn't tell them that it was created three seconds before they joined. Um, but, you know, that was a real catalyst that showed that there were other people interested in urban exploration. And it really gave me the opportunity to create a physical community around urban exploration. Because up until then, there were all these great websites and blogs writing about these amazing locations, but no one was actually going and doing it as a group. And so, you know, armed with around two years of, uh, you know, of prior knowledge of, of these interesting locations, I figured, I decided, okay, I'm going to have an event at least once a week. Um, because if it's once a month, I felt that, you know, if, if you don't show up that one event, you're, you're gone, you're, you know, there, especially these days where there's so many distractions. So I figured that the only way to really create a community was to, uh, a, you know, a consistent community was to have at least one event and a week. And, you know, since then it's, it's grown to now there's at least five events a week. Um, but you know, caveat is that I've been doing this full time now for, for a year. And that was three years ago when, um, everyone came into the group. Wow. So it sounds like you've built the, you've built your community off of the experiences of other people. And you, I remember you previously, previously mentioning that you were able to grow uh, after you gained some traction through word of mouth, which we all know is the jackpot of marketing. Yeah. Besides that, what else do you attribute to the growth of your community? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, word of mouth, grassroots, uh, you know, the, you know the, the con there is that it's slow and steady. It, it wasn't an overnight success, and it's still not an overnight. Like, you know, as, I, as this progresses and it does get larger, you realize that, you know, a mention in, you know, in a publication or, uh, you know, doing, doing a live interview definitely gets uh, new users, but it's not going to be that, you know, that exponential uh, off-the-charts surge of, of people, um, you know, you have to tap into these different communities uh, because you know everyone following a different publication is, is you know, they're in their own community. Uh, the, you know, people who read the New York Times are going to be different than the ones who read the New Yorker or Huffington Post. So maybe in the old days where you know you could get 
you know, mentioned in one of these larger magazines and then everyone knows you in the, in the entire country. Now, it, you know, the, the environment's a lot more fragmented. So, you, you know, I have to actively um, seek out those, those opportunities. So, you know, I think how we, we connected was through the uh, help a reporter out um, because, uh, you know, that gives me the opportunity to just, you know, throw my, my pitch out and to, uh, you know, to journalists looking for interesting stories. Um, but to back, you know, back to your, back to your question, uh, you know, word of mouth press, um, you know, I have done a little social media marketing, uh, did a Facebook campaign in the summer. Um, but mostly word of mouth, if, you know, for me, it's, it's, I want to build the integrity of the community and sure you can have a hundred thousand uh, members uh, you know, and spend a lot of money across multiple sources. But you know, it's in the end, it's going to fall on the people who really create your community. Um, and it's a physical community. So it's very important who's coming out that they're, they're engaged, that they're inquisitive, that they, they want to be there. And that's a, that's an important thing, especially when you go to a, a location and you need to have good representation. If the people with you, don't care about the place and aren't, you know, aren't asking questions, then you might not get invited back. And, you know, New York Adventure Club is about those behind the scenes and special access, access experiences. So, um, you know, it's important that we have, we have good representation at these events. So you started as a one man show. Have you since scaled or do you do all the planning and pick the venues? Do you do everything? What's your secret? Yes. And uh, like, yes, it's still a one man, it's still one man, one man show. I do have, uh, some help though. I have a, I create a brand ambassador program. Um, so mo most events, there's someone from adventure club, uh, greeting you, checking you in, um, you know, making sure the group, uh, if they're, you know, if the group is quiet, making sure they're asking questions or if it's a larger group, you know, they're at the tail end, they're the sweeper, make sure everyone you know, gets on their way. Um, so that definitely helps, uh, you know, with the, with the frequency of events. So, you know, five events a week would be, would definitely be difficult if I didn't have um, this program. Uh, and, you know, as far as finding the events, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole mix. Uh, sure, you know, like yesterday, I was in the Upper West Side going street by street and just going inside of places that looked interesting that I haven't been to yet. But, you know, a lot of the good events now come from the community. Uh, you know, people who have experienced Adventure Club in the past and had a, you know, had a great time now will email me regularly with new opportunities, whether it's just pointing something out, like an article that came out about a unique location, or more importantly, and what's more helpful is an e-introduction. Um, you know, someone works here, they, a friend uh, knows this person. Um, and, you know, that is, that's pivotal, especially for a large, if it's a large organization, and, you know, emailing the info at, it will only get you so far. Um, but if you have that specific person that you're contacting and you're referred by someone, uh, it just it makes the opportunity a lot easier and, um, you know, makes them a lot more, uh, you know, willing to, 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 to chat and to put something uh, special together. Yeah. Because a community is only as strong as the people that are in it. And if you have people that believe in your mission, believe in your vision, they're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, they're going to go, you know, they're going to go to bat for you. And so the thought of a community can be intimidating for some people. You know, at one point you even say you were going to quit. What would you say to the individual that wants to start something bigger than themselves, but doesn't know where to start or how to go about doing that? Yeah, you know, uh, this might be cliche, but you have to focus on the product. You know, like, you know, creating the great experiences was always, you know, was always my first, my first goal. Um, even when the, when, the, when the group was only 100 people, and that probably only meant 10 people were active. But it didn't, I don't know, it didn't really matter to me. I wanted to still... I still treated it the same back then as I did today. Um, and, you know, if, no, if no one showed up, then, you know, and uh, then that's, then that's that. Like I, I was still, you know, you know this uh, adventure club is, is, is self-serving. I want to get into these places. I want to get access. Uh, and so, you know, if I put a great event up and only five people join them, you know what, those five people are, are, you know, are my, <laughs> are the champs and they're, you know, they're the best. And uh, yeah, you know, just, start small. Like I, you know, when I started this, it was, it was just a small little Facebook group. And that's, uh, you know, I treated it more seriously than just a Facebook group, but you know, I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't throwing 10 events on the calendar, right? Like you have to be realistic. Um, but it's, it's fine because you know, when you do, if you do start something and there, you do see some traction, 
Um, you, if you do see some people come out and they love it, that, that means there's, there's more of them. And so the more opportunities you have for these people to engage with the, or engage with the brand, the, you know, that's when the word of mouth and the grassroots um, campaigns really going to start to take off. Um, so like, yeah, my recommendation would just be to, you know, focus you know, be realistic and focus on, you know, on what drives you because it's the, you know, it's the consistency that matters. Um, you know, I, I feel like in this day and age, everyone's trying to go viral, but honestly, you know, it's, you, you just have to, you just have to be in it. You know, you have to be a hundred percent in it. And if you are, and you know, and you're dedicated to it, um, you know, people will come, you know, uh, if you're doing something interesting, people will come and, and trust me, I, there, there are times where I was like, what's, you know, what, where is this going? You know, the last month only 10 people signed up, but, um, and maybe I should, you know, looking back, I would have done maybe a little more outward marketing. Um, I would have been a little more proactive. Um, but you know, I had the, I had the luxury of time. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the biggest resource I've been using is time. It's not, you know, I don't have, I'm not paying for a factory or I don't have staff to pay for, um, but I am, you know, sacrificing a lot of time. My, in, in, this, in this case, it was my free time uh, around my, my full-time corporate job. Um, so, you know, just use your, you know, do what you want in your spare time. Um, use your spare time towards the, you know, the, you know, the things that you're trying to, trying to build. Yes. And if I could take, if I could just sum up what you said, in order for us to build something bigger than ourselves and, and, and to build a community, we have to focus on quality and not quantity, building deeper relationships with people in, you know, versus the wide. We can go deep and wide, but deep first and then wide. So thank you so much. And as we wrap up, where can people get in touch with you? Absolutely. Uh, you know, they can visit NewYorkAdventureClub.com to see our upcoming experiences and we're also on social of course on facebook and instagram ny adventure club so hopefully uh you know if you live in new york or uh or you're coming to new york definitely uh check us out if you're looking for that offbeat uh new york culture and thank you so much for spending your time with us Corey. i really do appreciate it i appreciate it as well thank you so much